Welcome to tip number 24. We're going to talk about some of the key numbers that we introduced over the last several tips. And just for your reference, uh, shops really do need to be looking at probably 15 to 20, maybe even 25 key numbers on a regular basis. Now that's going to change uh, depending on the situation within your business, whether or not you have other things balanced out, etc. Today we're only going to talk about five of those numbers because frankly that's all we have time. So I've kind of picked what I believe to be some of the most important numbers. First of all, sales. And sales is a very important number for us because I need to sell a certain amount of business in order to keep my technicians 100% productive, in order to pay my fixed expenses and to have 20% left in my bottom line, and frankly, in order to make the kind of money that I want to make. And I'm here in business to make money, that's why I'm here, so that's what I want to do. So sales becomes a number that I look at every single day. I look at to make sure that we're actually on target to sell what we need. Now car count is also an important number because if I don't have enough cars, then I'm not going to be able to sell what I need to sell. On the other hand, car count may not mean a darn thing because if I don't have productivity, I can't get the work done. If I don't have sales and I don't sell enough average repair order per car, I could bring in a thousand cars a month and still not make a profit in my business. So I'm not going to talk about car count because we're going to get into that in some of the next tips, how to increase car count with the right customers. What we are going to talk about besides sales is average repair order, productivity, opportunity, and margin. Now if you ask me to tell you which one of these is most important, in my world it's probably margin. When I sold something, did I sell it for the right price? <clears throat> margin is very, very important because I can sell all kinds of things and if there's not enough profit in it, then I don't make any money. Uh, if I don't cover the fixed expenses and, and bring in additional money, then I don't have any money for me. Uh, I don't have money for equipment, I don't have money to maintain my building, etc. Now there's uh, in the industry today there's this idea of gross profit dollars per hour and it's a great idea frankly. Uh, I need to be bringing in a certain number of gross profit dollars per hour and I want you to understand something when margin goes down sales have to go up because if I'm making 10% of a hundred thousand dollars that's ten ten thousand dollars. If I'm making 30% of a hundred thousand dollars that's $30,000. If I'm making 50% of $100,000, that's $50,000. So your margin, your gross margin on parts should be 58%. Your gross margin on labor should be about 64%. And when all that's put together, it should balance out to about 62%. If you are not charging enough for your parts or your labor, you will have to do a lot more work. So back to the original comment. If my fixed expenses are $25,000 and I want to keep them at 25%, I have to do $100,000 worth of business. If my fixed expenses are $25,000 and I'm making a 50% margin, then I can do $50,000 and have my fixed expenses paid and have another uh, $25,000 sitting there. Now, if $25,000 is what I need uh, to uh, take care of myself, uh, to pay my bills, to be happy, then I'm in great shape. So margin is a very, very important number to your business. And if anybody tells you discount, bring the price down, just remember, if you're going to do that, you have to sell a lot more work in order to make the same amount of money. As margin decreases, workload must increase in order to keep the balance and still make the same amount of money. Next we're going to talk about productivity. I'm not saying this is the second most important number in your business. Uh, um, I'm just saying that it's an important number because it doesn't matter what I sell. If my techs don't get the work done, then I don't put that money in my bank. And there's another clause to this. If my techs are not productive and I'm pay, paying them hourly or salary of some type, then my cost will go up. 
So as my productivity goes down, my cost for labor goes up. If I pay a tech 100 bucks an hour, just for the heck of it, $800 today, and that tech does eight hours, and I sell those eight hours for $120, then I've got $1,160, I have $160 left. If I pay that tech that same money, $800, $80, whatever it is, and my tech only does six hours that I can sell, and I sell those for you know, $120, that's uh, uh, $720. I did not even cover what I paid my tech because I did not charge enough for that labor. And of course, I'm not gonna pay a tech $800, but it, uh, it shows the point. Even if I'm paying my tech $30 an hour, and I add a load, that becomes about $39 an hour. Uh, uh, if I'm, my tech is 50% productive and our effective labor rate is $90 an hour, we're only gonna make $45 an hour. I pay him 39, there's only $6 left per hour for me to pay my bills. And then the worst part about that is he didn't do eight hours, he only did six hours. So I only have $48 to pay my bills and not the money that I need. I hope I'm not confusing you. Sometimes in my own head, uh, I get kind of mixed up. Uh, not mixed up, but I, I, it's complicated. And I'm in three different places at the same time. So productivity becomes a very important number for my business. And productivity is something that I pay attention to daily, almost hourly, frankly. Uh, every single day, I want to know that my texts were productive. And if they were not productive, why weren't they productive? Why didn't you get eight hours out today or nine hours out today? Another number that's very important is a number called opportunity. And people don't, mo, many shop owners don't look at opportunity. Opportunity is what could I have sold to my customer if I sold everything that the technician found and the initial thing that the customer came in for. So if the customer came in for a $100 service of some type, we did an inspection, we found another $2,900 worth of work that the car needed my total opportunity was $3,000. If I understand opportunity, then in some sense, I also start to understand the type of customers that I'm bringing in. Because if I'm bringing in people that are used to maintaining their cars, I'm gonna have a little smaller opportunity than if I'm bringing in people that don't maintain their cars, assuming we're doing a good inspection. So opportunity is a very important number. The other thing, I cannot find sell rate how much my service advisor is selling if I'm not tracking opportunity, and I cannot find how much my customers are buying if I'm not tracking opportunity. In a shop that's a relationship shop that builds relationships with their customers, where the customer is there because they think to themselves, this is the shop where I wanna be, opportunity points out that these are customers, we've looked their car over, and now I can track sell rate and, and what should that customer be buying? In a typical shop, the number we use for sell rate would be about 60%. I would like to bring in the right customer such that when we do inspections and we find work on the car, that at least 60% of the work is being sold to my customers. If we're not selling 60%, then we have some other problems. We either have a problem with our salespeople, they can't build relationships, they can't build value, they're not answering the customer's objections, they're not asking for the sale, or we might have a problem with our customer. There are customers who do not buy, that do not wanna buy, that are never gonna buy, and if we have the wrong customers in the business, it's very, very difficult for us to be successful. So opportunity leads to sell rate. So you got a bonus number to look at, and that would be sell rate, and we're looking for about 60%. Opportunity should be on a, a general in a general repair shop. I'm, I'm bringing in Toyotas, Hondas, uh, a few German cars, uh, uh, American cars, trucks, etc. Uh, opportunity probably should be somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,400. When a car comes in, typically, it needs about $1,400 worth of work. If I sell 60% of that, then I'm going to have an average repair order of uh, what I don't know what it is, 800 and some dollars, uh, and that means that we built, brought in the right customers. Uh, we did a good inspection, we found the work that needed to be done, we presented it to the customer, and we were able to answer their objections, build a relationship, and close. In a German car shop, I have German car shops that are finding about $2,500 typically on a car, 
And I have some other shops that are finding about $4,000 to $5,000 typically on a car, which is always interesting to me because they're looking at the same cars. If you're probably under $2,500 on your opportunity, if you're a German car shop, then your inspections are not good enough or you're not bringing in enough new customers. Um, uh, when my opportunity is low, it's because we didn't bring in the right customers, meaning I don't have cars that are older than two years old. Uh, a car under two years old probably doesn't need a lot of work. It won't have a lot of opportunity. It might mean that I'm not bringing in any new customers. I need to bring in about 30% new customers to my business because I'm going to lose about 18% if I'm a typical shop and I want to grow my business by 10 to 12%. So 30% new customers helps me out. It also brings in cars that have not been inspected as well as we inspected, uh, inspect them and customers who we've never sold to before, who are not used to what we do and how we sell and, and buying the work on their cars. If you do a great job of inspecting your customer's car and you build good relationships, then you should have a, a, a reasonable opportunity and a reasonable sell rate, which would lead to a, a reasonable average repair order. Uh, our average repair order in the industry, the last time I looked, last statistic was 372. That's probably half of what it ought to be. And uh, uh, past statistics in the United States say that over $2 billion worth of work on the American fleet were never performed. Either the work wasn't found, it wasn't offered to the customer, or the customer did not buy that work. So there's a lot of work out there on cars that needs to be done. By tracking opportunity, tracking sell rate, and tracking average repair order, I can start to understand why what's going on in my business and how to improve that. So we talked about margin, we talked about uh, productivity, we've talked about average repair order, uh, opportunity and sell rate, and we've talked about sales. Now, there are lots of other numbers that uh, we need to look at and that we need to pay attention to at different points in our business, but here's the beginning and here's a start for you. We'll see you on the next tips. We hope you enjoyed this week's tip. For more information on the concepts we discussed, check out our upcoming classes at www.ifrave.com forward slash classes. Or listen to the Leading Edge podcast at institutesleadingedge.podby.com, where we discuss business topics just like this one with a panel of industry experts. You can also contact us whenever it's convenient, and we'll set up a free consultation on how the Institute can help you better your business, your life, and the industry as a whole. We'll see you guys next week.